present with their counsel, Ms. Fine, for Mr. Hordusky and Mr. Friedman, I believe, for Ms. Johnson. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. This is plaintiff's uh, motion to enforce the settlement agreement, and I think the only issue that remains at this point is, since the stipulation and order has now been signed, is the request for attorney's fees. Is that correct? Or that have is you correct. resolved that this morning? It's one and a half. It's one and a half things. It's that basically, but because we couldn't get this order over to the court, they continued, family, uh, district court, family support, they continued to take money. So right. I need the order to say that that has to stop and um, that um, an audit should be done to determine if everything's fine. But um, basi basi basically, his, his checks keep getting debited um, involuntarily. We've had this agreement since September of 2012. So he might be entitled to some type of credit? He might be into, well, the, he has primary physical custody right now, and she's supposed to be paying care. him. He doesn't care. Well, at this particular moment, still does until um, the parenting coordinator indicates that it's joint. So, and I haven't seen anything in writing from the parenting coordinator, but regardless, <clears throat> there was a child support order. It might be over, but there was a child support order that was to be paid, and um, I don't know if that has been paid either. So, we need to do an audit. Uh, but we do know that there is no more money owed, and if there is, then we we've, we'll find out at the end of the audit. But he needs to be able to get his checks and not money owed um, because he was entitled to a credit against the money that he was to pay her on attorney's fees, if I remember, or uh, on something. Arrears. Arrears. She was supposed to pay him $1,500 in attorney's fees. Um, we agreed to waive that, and it would come off of any arrears that he was currently paying her in Correct. child support. Um, we believe that there's no more child support arrears, and that uh, if, the, and if there are, it should have been the, credited with the $1,500 in attorney's fees. I know it sounds complicated. I did no, no, actually, I, I understand what you mean, Ms. Fine. I actually did do a uh, proposed order that, if, um, that leaves the attorney fees blank, but it says everything else. If I could give it to Mr. Friedman, Mr. Friedman to look at, um, based upon your order, it basically just says all the things that we're trying to do, which really I, aren't even in conflict, in my opinion. But um, the fact that we had to come back is we agreed in, in front of Judge Gaston on, on September 7th, 2012, and it took until March 21st, 2013 to get an order. Matt drafted one, I drafted one, and finally we just drafted it exactly like in January, exactly like the court it, we agreed, word for word. I sent it over to Matt in January with a letter and we couldn't, finally had to file a motion on March 7th, I believe. It took until March 18th to get it signed, and, and then Mr. Friedman indicates that the reason it took so long was because he became a new firm and that we sent it to the wrong address. We did not. We sent it to the correct address. It just had the wrong firm name on it, but it was the correct address, and it still had Mr. Friedman's name and Mr. Ford's name, so I'm <coughs> sure it got to him. Um, there were no complications. It, it, if you want to use anyway, I'm, I, I should shut up. Mr. Friedman? If I may, um, just a, a couple points of clarification. Um, Ms. Fine's motion to enforce was not filed in March. It was filed February 1st. Okay. What happened was it was filed February 1st. I advised Ms. Fine, and she's correct. She recounted those facts correctly that originally I prepared an order. We had some ongoing discussions over the substance of that. Subsequently, she did prepare an order. We had similar conversations. In the middle of that, my firm basically underwent a change. It wasn't the allegation that it wasn't sent to me properly. I never addressed that. The issue that I had was because my firm, firm reorganized, I needed my client to elect an attorney pursuant to bar regulation. So she needed to choose whether she was going to come with me and my partner currently, our former partner who was doing her own firm since she was a client of all of ours, or elect other counsel. And it took some time to get those processed for all of my clients and specifically Ms. Johnson. Um, so some of the delay, to the extent that there was, was one, ha had to do with that. Some of it had to do with just simply revisions. But the parties had a settlement agreement that was hammered out and fined and filed with the Supreme Court that they were abiding by. Okay, so this was just the, the fine-tuning of the document. Again, to be clear, uh, the motion to enforce that Ms. Ms. Fine filed was not filed in March. She, she re-noticed it in March. It was filed February 1st. You're right. I apologize. The, the, the judge, it was vacated because the, the, the stipulation and order was signed and filed by the court. It was vacated as moot. She opted to then re-notice it, and that's why we're here today. So there's, there's a timeline issue there. Um, as in for the child support, I will agree with Ms. Fine potentially if she'd like to, we can all per perhaps cooperatively work, and I'm sure we can work that out, to assess exactly what the monies are. But to be clear, what has happened with that is 
there was never any question that Mr. Hordesky was to be paying current child support. That terminated once we reached uh, a settlement agreement. What, what was happening was there was a substantial amount of arrears, which we all acknowledged at the settlement conference. To the extent that there was an existing garnishment in place, it was for the collection of those arrears, not for the collection of, of support. Now, my client was to be paying $200 a month as in for child support going forward. Um, or excuse me, uh, uh, $100. $100. I apologize. It's a misstatement. However, there was a pretty, my understanding is that the last figure that we were using at the settlement conference, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to $9,000 in arrears. Oh, seven. Now, that, that, number, that number may be... Does, it doesn't matter. Right. It's whatever it is. Right, whatever it is. That's correct. But there was a substantial amount. So uh, my client's representation is she's not received a dollar, okay, that has been garnished from Ms. Hordesi. We're, we're confused as to what Ms. Fine's actually been talking about. If there was something, certainly it's very easy to track. It can be sorted out. Wherever money needs to flow, that'll be done. Okay, but that's... Was the garnishment money going to the DA's office? It was being taken from his paycheck and, yes, going to the DA's office. And sadly, there's all kinds of interest and penalties that are still being attributed of at least $500, which we're going to have to file a motion on. It's probably not even worth it to my client because he's already spent thousands and thousands. And Mr. Freeman is right. I did file it February 1st, and then Mr. Mr. Um, Department C's law clerk called me and told me that the hearing had been vacated. And I, will, be I will not attribute to Ms. Johnson... Um, the issues with regard to the firm and wanting a new retainer agreement. Although, since you were always the attorney of record, I think you could have proceeded forward and um, had her sign the stipulation, um, regardless of whether you had a new retainer agreement or not. But I'm not going to charge that against um, the client, so I'll deny the request for attorney's fees. With regard to the child support issue, the current child support should have ended on, at the time of the settlement. So the only issue was the arrearages, and he's entitled to a credit of the original $1,500 towards those arrearages, Not in dispute at all. Yeah. plus all of his payments that he has been making should have been credited solely to the arrearages and not to current support. And therefore, any interest or penalty fees that have been assessed need to be adjusted to make sure that those were only assessed as to whatever the corrected balances of the arrearages should have been pursuant to the September settlement agreement. Will that get you where you need? And it says, as of June, Judge, the... Um, can you, the, the um, the court's order of June 27th, from which the appeal was taken, should remain in full force and effect except for those items that were modified in the stipulation and order filed with this court on the 21st day of March 2013, as well as the, as what you indicated? And we, we would concur with that, that the existing custody order arose from um, the result of trial, and that is correct. We, we concur, that we're looking at it, yes. the, the, the okay. 6 6 12, Thank you. 6 6 12. We would concur. That's, That's not right. an issue. That's what I put it in my and I, miss, I would assume Ms. Fine and I can work together. You can contact the DA Fine exactly. I know it's a, it's a, it can be a nightmare, but I'm sure the two of us together can get if that done. If they have a number that says do an audit, they're going to do an audit. <laughs> well, I'm just talking about the time. But yes, I'm sure we can get that handled. And then if there's some issue, I'm sure, and we dispute, which won't happen, I'm sure Ms. Fine is more than capable of getting it back on, on calendar here today. We'll do that. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank I, appreciate, you. I appreciate it. My client appreciates hearing your acknowledgement. And um, even if he didn't get any attorney's fees, he appreciates his day in court. Thank you, Judge.